Hey, Andy here. Harvester 1.40 just came out, and I figured this would be a fine time to go ahead and look through the release notes, maybe poke around with it, and together kind of see uh, what are the big changes from 1.3. So for those that aren't familiar, I've got a website called dzver.rfed.io. It just kind of shows the latest versions. If you click on, say, 1.4, there's the release notes. It'll show you kind of all the files you need if you're doing a full like uh, netboot install or if you're doing a straight ISO install, but it's also got the release notes. So let's take a look at it. So the installer checks minimum requirements. Uh, Longhorn V2, this is an interesting one. So Longhorn has been going through a performance upgrade starting with their V2 data engine support. The fact that it's included now, that's awesome to see. Volume encryption and decryption. Uh, V4 allows you to encrypt and decrypt volumes, including boot volumes for the virtual machines. Some of our government customers re required this. Uh, local storage support uh, for better performance and latency. This function is made possible through, through LVM. So you can use LVM as a local CSI driver. Uh, Third-party storage for diskless servers. That looks cool. Read-write, virtual machine restoration on a new cluster. Some of these are pretty pretty uh, innocuous. This is a good one though. USB pass-through. So before you had NVMe pass-through, so you could take a PCI device, sorry, PCI pass-through, like an NVMe drive and pass it into the virtual machine to give it more direct access. Now you can do the same with USB, which we're going to take a look at because I just put a drive in my machine. So in a previous video, I upgraded from 1.3.2 to 1.4. Uh, I've got a single machine. It's a uh, Minus Forums Ryzen, what is it, a Ryzen 7 8700 series, something like that. I've got a single virtual machine, so I'm actually getting rid of my Synology and I'm running uh, a TrueNAS virtual machine that has NVMe pass through that does all of my storage for my kids' Plexes, Plex server. I also run uh, like AdGuard and a few other little things on TrueNAS, so it works out really well. The We can go through volume, so it's degraded only because it's trying to find the replica of three. We can go to images, so, so all this looks pretty much the same. If we go down to advanced, this is where we start to see some of the differences, right? So right now we've got better support for PCI devices, and if we go through... We can see that there's my NVMe for like that pass-through for TrueNAS. We can now have a thing called USB devices. So I just plugged in a thumb drive. Let's see if we can find it. If I was a thumb drive, what would I be? Unknown? I think that's it. We don't need Bluetooth. Product ID, vendor ID. Let's go ahead and enable it. Let's enable pass-through. Uh, situations, replugging the device or rebooting the node. Oh, okay, so that's interesting. You have to re-enable it if the device moves. So let's go ahead and do a virtual machine. Let's go ahead and create. I've got a bunch of templates set up. We'll call this USB. We'll set the template up for little, and then we'll go under here under USB devices, and we'll try that device. Because I don't like the Via Labs. I don't like that. I think that's the new one. So let's go ahead and hit create, and then let's see. I'm assuming there's like an LSUSB. Well, this is booting. Let's take a look around some more. So vGPU support, which is interesting. Secret settings. One of the things I was curious about, because I know if you go under the support, and I had this enabled, I do, okay. So we can actually go look at the embedded Longhorn. And one of the things we can do is we can actually look at the volumes. Degraded, detached. I'm trying to see if any of them are ready to be upgraded. Or they already, oh, they're, see, they're already using the V1 engine. So I wonder how do we get to enable that? Let's go back to the release notes. Let's go to the documentation for it. Oh, it's still an experimental feature. Oh, well, that's interesting. It's experimental, but in Harvester 1.4, it should not be utilized in a production environment. Okay, so we'll stay with V1. That is interesting. The other thing that I think is uh, kind of interesting under the available add-ons was Rancher Manager as a V cluster. So that's kind of a cool thing. And there's steps here to how to enable that to run a full-featured Rancher as a container instead of a VM. 
So let's go back to our virtual machines. It's not up yet. That's interesting. Let's pull the console or it may be up. It's just not pulling in the uh, IP address. Yep, still booting. Okay, there we go, it's booting. So that's pretty cool to be able to pull up the console. And we'll give that a second to come up. There we go, and we'll go root. Should be my default pos password. No USB, okay. Uh, what am I running? LS USB? No, nope. I know DMI decode should be able to find it, right? DMI decode. Actually, if it's a volume, LS block should show it. So VDA, VDB, VDA, VDB. Hmm. Maybe that wasn't the USB device. I'll have to play with this in a little bit. Okay, quick update. Figured out what I was doing wrong. I had my thumb drive plugged into the Thunderbolt 4 USB 4 port, and I guess that may not be supported, so I took the thumb drive, put it in the USB 3 port, and everything works great. So I've got, just to show you right now, I've got my VM, I'm logged in, I'm running LS USB, I had to figure out the package and installed it. And notice I just see the root hubs and the QEMU tablet. Okay. I do not have it configured. One thing to kind of note is if I go in here and edit configuration, I go to USB devices, that is in fact the thumb drive. I can go up here and I can select it, I can hit save. I have to actually restart the VM. Not a big deal, but just something to note. And this would kick me out, and we'll wait for it to come back up. And here, we'll go ahead and watch the, whoop, we don't need the serial. Let's watch the console. Do, 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 do. Can watch Rocky Boot. And this is Rocky 9495, whatever just came out. I just updated the ISO image not long ago, like a couple days ago, a week ago. Cool. And when that thing SSH back in, we can run our clear USB. And there we go. Now we see the disk device showing up if we do an ls block we can see that it's showing up as a 32 gig or sorry 29 gig sda1 so let's do mount so dev sda m and t first day with the fingers great and we can see here i've already, my thumb drive already plugged in with and it just happens to have the ISO to boot, as well as the QCAL for setting up VMs uh, under Rocky, of course. And cool. Hopefully this helps and shows USB pass through. Thanks for sticking around and watching this. But you can see how now. That's funny. It didn't get. Why did you get? Why didn't you get an IP address? Oh, it's got an IP address. Okay, good still starting it'll pop up in a second but as you can see right it's pretty much more of the same usb passer is pretty cool be able to pass in usb devices one of the things i was going to try and play with was uh, i had a box with a gpu in it but physically plug in a keyboard and mouse directly into the vm and then the output of the video card to a monitor so it allowed me to, to effectively play locally uh, games through the video card so that was pretty cool Let's go in here. Yep, cool. USB. I guess I got to figure out what that USB device is. I don't think it's any of the VIA Labs. It doesn't make any sense in the VIA Labs. 203, 203, hmm. But yeah, like I said, more of the same. And then there was another question somebody had about installing like OpenEBS. In theory, you could install and create uh, a storage class locally right so you go ahead and create a storage class the trick is you'd have to go and install the csi driver oh volume encryption i like that cool migratable cool so these are some new settings right that migrate that volume encryption but i guess you got to do it at the storage class level what if we went in here and edited the config for this one no nope, you can't adjust it because there's things already installed allow topographies cool oh key value pair nice uh cloud configuration templates 
and then templates themselves. By the way, this is where I go and create my little templates for um, installing a bunch of things like keys and things like that. I hope this is a good primer on some of the changes for 1.4. Oh, one other thing real quick. Let's go to support. Let's look at the embedded rancher UI. So this should look very familiar. Notice down here it says unknown harvester 1.4. Yeah, so, so there is a full featured rancher underneath it. Uh, or should I, there's a rancher, not, it's not full featured. This is where you're gonna wanna go ahead and either use the add-on for vCluster or deploy a remote rancher. I got a video on this where you can use rancher in the cloud managing Harvester locally. Okay, cool. Oh, and the way you get to these two buttons, just kind of real quick, go to preferences, enable extensions for developer features. You have to check this because if you don't check it, I'll go back and go to support. Notice they're, notice they're missing, but if I go back to preferences, I can enable it and hit back and there they are. Okay, hope this helps in kind of taking a look at some of the new features in 1.4. Um, the upgrade went incredibly smooth and quick, much quicker than from 1.3.1 to 1.3.2. So I think you're in good shape there for playing. Uh, hopefully this helps and have a good one.